Welcome to the Go Gardening Show. I'm here at the Herf Farm in Bernie with my good friend Sarah and Keith. And they're going to tell me a little bit about the Herf Farm. So hello, I'm Sarah Berenger. I'm the Director of Farm Programs with the Cibolo Center for Conservation. So we, as an organization, um, as we have got this Nature Center side, and then we have the Herf Farm side. So we're on the Herf Farm side. We're about 60 acres. Uh, we have a one acre permaculture garden, uh -huh. and it's all designed around education and conservation of resources and um, being pillars in the community. Excellent, excellent. Why don't you hand the mic off to my good friend, longtime friend. We've known Kate. each other for several years, haven't we? Oh, yeah, not? several, yes, we have. several, and several we still, decades, and we maybe. we still speak to each other, which yeah. is quite unusual. Um, so, but anyway, it's, it's a pleasure for, to have you out. Yeah. Uh, so, I'm a longtime volunteer here at the Her Farm. Uh, a lot of this is my brain work on paper, and these wonderful people come in and take care of it and knock it out of the park and make it bloom mm -hmm. and do all kinds of beautiful things here. So, I'm just tickled to death to have you guys here. All right. Just we're we're happy, happy, happy to be you. here. And we're going to go around the farm and look at some of the beautiful things that you're doing so let's go out and look at some of the great things let's, let's go it. all right all right well now uh sarah yeah. and keith this area right here was one of the first areas you worked on in the farm but it's changing a little tell me a little bit about what's going on here Sure, so uh, we have turned this into what we call the community education garden, mm -hmm. and it's shared by homeschool kiddos who get to plant their plants here because we're trying to teach them how to grow soil to table organically okay. and the best practices in Texas. So they come every Wednesday, we work with them, they get to uh, pick their plants, put them mm -hmm. in the ground, mm -hmm. and then they share this bed here. And then these two beds are actually for our RMYA kiddos. I don't know if you're familiar. No, but, I don't. What's that? Okay, What's so that? It, they're, um, it's the Deep Roots program, and these are kids that are at risk. Mm, they, okay. They are over, uh, they have a school, charter school mm -hmm. over here, and so they come every Friday, and we do the same thing with them, teach them about insect netting, um, you know, how to grow. Some of these kids, it's great because they, for the first time, they finally get to get their hands in the dirt right. and, you know, learn about, all different things when it comes to growing food. Now, I know it's a lot of organic material. Uh, Honestly, the case. Sure. So is this what we call permaculture or Hugo or or is this just no, this is the way we're doing good, it because good, of, of our soil? Sure, yeah, just good raised bed gardening techniques here. We're, we're blessed to have four feet of really rich old topsoil here where we planted these oh. posts and such. Uh, they're set four feet down in the ground. We oh. pulled up rocks this big and for the burning area that's quite amazing. Yeah. Um, so we do add lots of organic material. We've got built up mulch in between the walkways. All this great organic compost and stuff from the good folks over at uh, New Earth. Um, uh, get it uh, it helps cut the water use you know in half by having okay. so much organic content in the soil and again we've redone the drip systems in here so they're very effective and a great way to get that going so tell me a little bit about that we like to have water conservation Absolutely. as part of our programs here at go gardening tell me a little bit i know you have a lot of drip so so why are you doing drip and uh how often are you watering and so on sure uh, do you want to take it? No, go ahead. Okay. So <laughs> he's going to let me take it. So, uh, yeah, so we use drip irrigation because it's the most effective way to uh, water, especially when it comes to trying to conserve. So if you're, you know, out there watering or using a sprinkler system, there's a lot of water wasted. Mm -hmm. And the good part about using this drip irrigation is it actually goes right to the roots mm -hmm. instead of going all over the place. So this is what we practice here at the Herf Farm. Um, and we try to teach the public so we they can conserve water as well at their own and, places. And is your water off a of city water or a well? So or? we have a well mm -hmm. and it's right over here. Yeah. Some of it's city, but for the most part it's water. And we do have a, a rain conservation or a, a rainwater, a rainwater harvest harvest yes. collection. Harvesting. Yes, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I know what it is. Yeah. Okay, okay we have that thing. Okay. And, uh, yeah. So. Bucket. <laughs> and, we, we and so yeah so we're we're designed to be able to do that as okay, well okay yeah. that's, that's great so this is the, the community gardening and then there's also some more gardenings that's correct and we're going to go look at those let's, right now let's do it <laughs> wow this place is just gorgeous it's full of color what is this place? So this is our children's garden here at the Herf Farm. And what's so special about it is it's got all the sights, the smells, the taste, the color. And so kids get to experience that. And, you know, it, it really helps them calm down and, 
you know, they, they just love it out here. We have a little sandbox over there, and mm. so the kids love to play in here. And we did go through the cistern garden. We did go through the yeah, cistern yeah. garden. Yeah. yeah, so a lot of these are named, but it's so spot. Like, we've got this fun little thing over here, too, that's just for decoration, but mm -hmm. just adds to the space, don't you think? Oh, yeah. yeah. No, I love the colors. Uh, all the pinks are on here, uh, and it very inviting for the pollinators. Correct, yes. You'll see butterflies going crazy all over the place. Yeah. We also have a pollinator garden over here, but we have lots of pollinators. Oh, well, we'll eventually have to see that, shall we? Yes, let's all do right. it. Wow. This, this is the pollinator garden. Wow. And all this color here. This and is, I see something way over here. Yeah. This is our native plant garden. Wow, this is uh, lots of pollinator plants. Tell me, who designed these? Sure, the master naturalist initially came out with the master plan, provided the initial plantings, uh -huh. and, take, and got that going. And then, of course, our staff and the wonderful volunteers that come out on the weekends. and So it. all your volunteers really really do all the really hard work. Yes, absolutely. So right. we, we have them come in and thin out. Uh, some of the iron weed. We want to make sure that we have milkweed in here for mm -hmm. the butterflies. And, but we do have the Texas Master Naturals come in and bring us plants on occasion. Okay. So we can make sure that we keep up the pollinator garden. Okay. Yeah. And again, everything in here is drip irrigated. That is correct. Okay. Yeah. And it's got a different watering system. I mean, it's the same system, but we don't water as much uh -huh. because we want to make sure we water according to, you know, what their needs are. So they're uh -huh. not going to need as much uh -huh. water because they're a lot hardier. Right. They're right. Native. They're, they're native perennials. They can withstand the abuse Absolutely. of our weather. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, great. Thanks. Well, we're going to leave all these wonderful goldenrod with all the lovely bees and other pollinators, but I see something over here. Yes, indeed. So this is our new and improved vegetable garden. We added a few more rows, so we have about 250 feet of space. I was gonna say, how was it new and improved? So you just answered that. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> so 250 feet additional? That No, so we started off with about three rows, but we connected all of our vegetable beds. So that way we have 250 feet of growing space. Mm -hmm. Yep. We just wanted more production. Uh, you know, we're all about community uh, here. Okay, but is this a community garden? No. Uh -uh. Tell so, me exactly what this is. Well, so we focus so much on education here mm -hmm. that we want to teach people how to grow vegetables in Texas, especially in the hill country and with some of the conditions we have. So this is all around education. And we also want to be able to have our own farm stand at our own farmer's market. Oh, yes. so every sa third Saturday or what No, is actually we have it every Saturday from nine to one. And it's right over here. We usually have about 30 vendors every week. So right here at her farm. That is correct. So okay. it's right over underneath the Oakmont, which okay. is that direction. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so, so again, this is all drip irrigation. That is correct. And who manages it? The staff? So staff, staff and volunteers. And okay. we also have groups that come out and they want to learn about gardening. So okay. yeah, so it's all hands-on experiential where right, we you right. know, teach them how to compost, teach them how to uh, use compost tea, how to build, how to mulch, so, all of it. Michiganders like myself <laughs> and Californians coming in like my sister coming yeah. in uh -huh. and they all learn how to grow vegetables the Texas way. That is correct. All As right. a matter of fact, we are coming up with an eight part organic gardening series in February of next year. On the web? That is correct. So we oh. have events. Um, if you go to Cibolo.org and you look at our events, uh, those are going to be posted shortly and you can take one class or you can take all eight classes. Wow. It's uh, kind of like a module. You take you know one right after the other. That's right. And all we right. have fantastic instructors like Keith over here that teach us how uh, to grow. And uh, he's actually done some of our education which has been he's, wonderful he's, he's been gardening for you know 60 yeah. 70 years so that's I correct yeah, yeah okay. I, I do know that okay. all right wonderful thank you all very very much thank you, thank you. for coming out we okay. appreciate it so sarah yes uh how do people actually volunteer for you so it's very easy all you have to do is go to cibolo c-i-b-o-l-o dot org mm -hmm. slash volunteer and you can just sign up that way all right, that's yeah. wonderful. 
what are your hours here again? So we are not open to the public during, um, except for on Saturdays for the farmer's uh -huh. market. However, we do have volunteering opportunities throughout the okay. week. We okay. also do group volunteering if people want to sign up. So, mm -hmm. yep, you can come out just about any time. Just let us know in advance and we'd love to have you. All right. Well, thank you both for allowing us to come out to the Hearth Farm and see all what's going on over here. Yeah. Well, we thank sure you so much for coming. It was great to have yeah. you. So thank you for watching. Let's get out there and garden and save some water. Ever wonder where all of the water we use to drink, bathe, cook, garden, and put out fires comes from? Ever wonder how our water supply is safeguarded to ensure it's there for generations to come? The answers to all your questions will be waiting for you at the Edwards Aquifer Authority Education Outreach Center. Book your free visit today at eaaeoc.org. The EOC is the place to be. Welcome to the Go Gardening Show. We're here at the Dell Webb's Hill Country Retreat at their annual garden safari. So, we're going to go around and look at a couple of houses here. This beautiful young couple has graciously allowed us to go in the back and look at their beautiful water feature and all the plants associated with it. Uh, we hope to see some beautiful things that you can do in your yard. So this is a stop on the garden safari that I could not pass up. You notice the light is getting a little thin. It's getting towards twilight, but that kind of enhances what we're seeing right here. So we have a beautiful water feature with ferns, uh, a, a, a Mexican herb called Ojo Santo. Uh, it's just coming down, cascading down. And we got some other ferns, some pipe, or horse, horse uh, hair, and some more ferns coming down, and then it gently comes down and it slowly goes into a pool over this way. Before we go to the other pool, I just want to mention something about these plants. So many people put flowering plants, plants by their pool or by their water feature. You really should keep those away. And these are all wonderful plants that don't produce flowers, but give a nice texture. Notice this texture and this leaf right here. So this is an excellent choice for plants around a pool or a water feature. So the water is cascading down these rocks and this meandering, and then the water ends up in this beautiful, tranquil pond. We have koi, we have lily pads, we have umbrella grass, very common feature on the river walk that you might see, and some other uh, plants, uh, water feature plants, uh, alocasia, um, types of the, uh, of the elephant ears you might see. So this is really beautiful. And then down here, we have a little bit of, it uh, looks like some cardinal flower coming up out of there. Uh, very well designed, shady, so that there's not a lot of water evaporation going on. So we're not losing a lot of water, but it, the water is, is consistently recycled up and then back down. So it's just beautiful. Even has these little lights. These are solar lights. This is, this is a fabulous little pond. And, and it is very enjoyable. So a lot of people think they need a big pond. That's okay. But if you're really interested in a nice tranquil feature in the backyard, a water feature is the way to go. And this is a beautiful example 
of having one in your backyard. Beautiful plants, beautiful rocks. The system works perfectly. So Candace, Candace is a good friend. She attends to all my wonderful programs that I give throughout the city. Don't you? Yes, I do. Oh, and they're really good. They're very good. Okay. Uh, so, uh, I really wanted to ask you, how, how does these things work in Del Webb here at Hill Country Retreat? How does the landscaping process work? You find a, a landscaper that mm -hmm. you are comfortable with, um, give him your ideas, mm -hmm. and then hopefully he's somebody who works with uh, the people at Del Webb and knows what they're looking for, ah, all the rules, Okay. knows how to fill out the paperwork the correct way the first time. Well, it's a beautiful yard, and let's go look at some of the plants okay. and some of the features here. All right. All right, let's okay. go. We'll go up this little path right okay. here. So, Candice, we have these wonderful native plants. What is this area called? Butterfly Garden. All right, well, just show me every, okay. all the plants here. Just. So this is on the main one. In fact, mm -hmm. just a few minutes ago, there were several large um, butterflies. But w right now we have the migration of the um, bottlenose butterflies. Yeah, uh, and so the bottlenose or the snout nose? Snout nose, sorry. Yeah, yeah. And, um, and so they're, in the morning, as soon as we turn on the water feature, they're like covering oh. the place. Okay, well, show me, show me some of these other plants here. So these are boxwoods here, these little baby ones here. These are what? Boxwoods. Okay. And um, and then this is the newest plant we just added. It's the Pride of Barbados. Uh huh. Uh huh. And um, do you see butterflies on this one too? Yes. Okay. Yes, they love that one. Uh -huh. Although this one is almost to the end of the season, mm -hmm. and so it will actually be cut to the ground for winter. Mm hmm. And then it'll come back even bigger for next year. All right. And it likes abuse, so it likes rock. And it likes well. Drought. That's pretty good in San Antonio. Yeah. we mm -hmm. have very abusive weather. Yes, we do. Yes, we do. All right. And so these are uh, bougainvillea. Mm -hmm. um, these shrubs. are shrubs. 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 No, so they're, they're not be. They're they not haven't gonna... been trained to be like a tree or no. anything like that. Okay. Yes. Now we and we have had to cut them because at night we like to watch the fountain. Okay. And um, sometimes the branches get too long there. Well, we've talked about it. the fountain now. This is really good. Now, is this okay with the plan? They, he drew it. Yeah. And they approved it. But then they come out when it's all done uh -huh. and say, yes, it can stay. Oh, or and no. then what happens if they say no? Then you have to remove it. Oh, oh, oh my. Or alter it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, yeah. uh, what about this area right here? So these are a, a variety, um, and I, the little name tags, there's like the ice plant, yeah. um, but they're all in the same family. Mm -hmm. and, um, and so that's, their, the landscaper said next year they're gonna be amazing. Oh, really? um, But these are actually, um, this one is icing sugar, mm -hmm. and they're all, these are all um, autumn sages, but they're different colors. And so they attract different insects mm -hmm. and um, butterflies. Like some of the bottlenose, like they'll only stay on the orange ones mm -hmm. and they aren't interested in the confetti ones. So we've reached almost to the end. Continue yes. forward of okay. the butterfly area. So, and then our bird feeder. Well, this is a bougainvillea. Mm -hmm. Is there anything special about this bougainvillea? No, except that it's the healthiest one here, yeah. the largest one. It's the largest one here. Yes, and I think it is has to do with, um, it's the oldest bougainvillea. So it's been around the longest and the newer colors mm -hmm. take longer to establish. Okay, so, so, so the, the very popular purple one. Yes. Uh, on that, so mm -hmm. does this have a name? Yes, it does. It has, uh, it's called Sundown bougainvillea. Oh. Well. We're so. going to talk about that. That's a lovely segue. Uh, but this is it. The, this is called what? Sundown. Sundown. Sundown okay. Bougavia. Oh, as the light slowly diminishes. Yes. That's probably a pretty good thing. Sundown. Okay. We're going to go over here, but I'm going to point out something that you've done throughout this garden. Okay. This is one of the most interesting, if not one of the best things I've always liked about people who've done this. When, how did you do this and why? There were so many plants and I needed to know what I had so that as I go to help other people in their mm -hmm. gardens mm -hmm. that 
I can actually remember what they were. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. um, so I've interspersed some of my vegetables in with some of my plants. I also have lemon balm yeah. back there. So this is a real great example of it. So you, you have some roses and you have some uh, vegetable plants and herbs and uh -huh. everything. How did you start with this, this particular I wanted a raised format. bed so okay. that I could incorporate the best soil to put in there. Mm -hmm. And then all of the beds have cardboard in the bottom mm -hmm. of them so mm -hmm. that it holds down the weeds. Mm -hmm. And then it also breaks down for mulch over, over time. Over time, mm -hmm. over that, provide a little aeration right. as well and mm -hmm. that good drainage. And area. then all of my beds also have, uh, I've added the um, worm casings because I oh, want okay. worms to, to really live there. Yeah. So you obviously take a lot of classes. Yes, I do. And I love them. All right. And everybody, my family says, mom's in her happy place. <laughs> well, that's good. We need a lot more places of that. <laughs> yeah, if you're looking for me, look out in the garden. All right. That's a good wrap up. Thank you, Candace, so much for allowing us coming. coming out to your house and letting us uh, film here. It's, it's been a real pleasure. Thank you. Thanks for coming. All right. What a beautiful place to wrap up our season three of our Go Gardening shows. If you'd like to see previous episodes, then go to our YouTube channel. So don't forget, let's go out there and garden and save some water. See you in season four. So how does enjoying the many beautiful parks and natural areas located in the Trinity Glen Rose Groundwater Conservation District help protect the clean water stored in the Trinity Aquifer? You can learn more at trinityglenrose.com slash pollution prevention. litter goes with the flow. Join the San Antonio River Authority in protecting area creeks and the river. Don't let litter trash your river. Let's all be river proud.